Today I'm going to show you a video posted by the Young Turks and their host Anna Kasparian on Syria or about the presidential elections and I'm going to address point by point uh, what she claims because it's very important to uh, clarify and elaborate these points for the American public and especially those who are on the left and are still misled by channels like the Young Turks who repeat the CIA talking points but in a diplomatic way or in a tacit way or an indirect way in order to uh, like continue the regime change war in Syria but under different names and banners. So let's play some of the parts of the video and pause it and address these uh, points. Syria just held its presidential election and Unsurprisingly, Bashar al-Assad won his fourth term, which means he'll be serving another seven years as the president of the country. In what I'm sure was a totally free and fair election. I'm sure that there was no funny business going on, nothing undemocratic taking place. Now, of course, the truth is very different from that. I'm being incredibly sarcastic. But before I get to the details on what went down during this election, I wanna be abundantly clear that as an individual who identifies on the left, you can both be against United States intervention or the United States meddling in these types of situations and also acknowledge when undemocratic behavior takes place. And that certainly is mm -hmm. the case in the country of Syria. And I wanna make the case for that. I wanna provide the receipts and you can judge for yourselves. I mean, look, you identify yourself on the left, but at the same time you say, uh, you can be against foreign meddling of, uh, for example, the Syrian affairs, but at the same time, you can also be against an undemocratic behavior. First of all, seriously, Anna Kasparian, the first question is, who are you? Who are you? You're an American citizen, you have a YouTube channel, you call yourself a journalist, and you're just pirating some lines of, uh, like, that you have in your mind, in your prejudgments, etc., about Syria. And you want to say that the elections in Syria were undemocratic and you want to object the results, like you express your objection of the results of uh, the elections. However, I want to tell you something, Anna Kasparian. You are infected with um, imperialism. You're infected with intellectual imperialism, which you think gives you the right to have the right to intervene in others' affairs and say what is right and what is wrong and how they should live and which lifestyle suits them and which political system uh, suits them. You are infected with, again, intellectual imperialism, which you think gives you the moral superiority to tell us in Syria what is right and what is wrong. This is the truth of the matter. Maybe you don't know that you're infected with this uh, illness now i'm telling you because any person like myself i don't post a video about the united states and say look how undemocratic the elections were uh, was in in uh, uh, in 2020 and how what trump did and their fans or etc etc it's not not even in my business and legitimacy for any president or any leader it's not like there is nothing written in the international law or in the constitution of or the charter of the un that says liberal democracy is a precondition for the legitimacy of the people people develop their own democracies and they accumulate like democracy is an accumulation of uh, experiences and we have a different cultural historical religious political experiences and we are developing our own democracy so you fucking model of a democracy doesn't suit us because we have a different human experience in the past centuries and because the United States and Europe developed in the past 400 years a certain type of experience and historical context, therefore some elements of the liberal democracy suits their societies, which could the same model could be counterproductive in other societies if you disregard their own values, their own traditions, their own human development. This is what you're doing, Anna Kasparian is an intellectual imperialism, thinking that you model is so perfect that could fit everyone, which it doesn't. You really need to understand this before going 
uh, into public and making yourself a mockery like you really you really look like a clown by telling us in Syria that the American democracy fits us. First, let's start off with the fact that not everyone was allowed to vote in this presidential election. So uh, Deutsche Welle uh, reports that not everyone within the country is allowed to vote. The country is home to the world's largest number of displaced people with millions of domestic refugees in the northwestern province of Idlib and in areas in the east that are outside of the government's control, run by Turkish troops or their proxy militia. Um, and they, they're the ones who have the say. Now, the Kurdish majority in northern Syria is also excluded from being able to vote in this election. Hold on, Anna Kasparian, you have made a lot of false claims now and you're quoting Deutsche Welle, which also uh, hasn't uh, like linked their claims to any source. It's just a bizarre to repeat Deutsche Welle, which is also funded by the German government. Uh, without double checking these claims, first of all, you say not everyone was allowed to vote and you are referring to the internally displaced Syrians. So, there are 7 million internally displaced Syrians. The vast majority of them live in government-held areas. Therefore, they are allowed to vote, Anna Kasparian. Two, you are saying that the people in the north uh, who are under the control in Azaz, Afin, Jarablus, control under Turkish occupation, they weren't, that's true. What's the number of these people? You don't mention that. Three, you say in the Kurdish majority areas, the people weren't allowed to vote. Please repeat that again to me, Anna Kasparian, because it really sickens me to when I hear this claim. Kurdish majority area, are you nuts? There is no place in Syria called the Turkish majority area. On the eastern shores of the Euphrates, the Pentagon and the CIA created a militia force and they named it the Syrian Democratic Forces and they are uh, the vast majority of them from the Kurdish uh, separatists or Kurdish militias. But that doesn't mean the people in this area are Kurdish in the area that the Syrian Democratic Forces occupy in the eastern shores of the Euphrates, 70% of them are not Kurdish. You're just repeating this very, like, stupid lie that the majority of the people on the eastern shores of the Ukraine. No, they are not. They are Syrians, Assyrians, Syriacs, Armenians, Arab clans, tribes, and a lot of other ethnicities and religious sects. But you call it the Kurdish majority area. It really irritates me, this uh, sentence. However, you also say that they were banned. Yes, at the day of the elections, they were not allowed to vote because your Pentagon and your CIA funded militias were blocking the people from going to the polling centers, to the election centers. But when the social pressure was very big and there was like a possibility of clashes between the people and your proxy American forces called the Syrian Democratic Forces, then the uh, these Kurdish militias uh, bold and they allowed some of the people to go and vote. So not everyone in the eastern shores of the Euphrates were like banned from voting. Francesca? Yeah, I mean, you said it perfectly. It sounds like you're someone who can walk and chew gum, Anna. That's pretty big, especially for some on the left to do, sadly. But you know, a lot of people are looking at this election and it's not even news. It's mm -hmm. not even news. The news is that he didn't win by 99% because that's what happens when you kill, maim, displace and otherwise completely control the opposition. I think there were a couple of candidates who ran against him that he himself may have selected like many autocrats tend to do to run against him, the joke being maybe those candidates even voted for him themselves, right? And so again, I'm not here to say this is legitimate or illegitimate, but it's certainly not democracy. I mean, only when you think that Anna Kasparian, nobody can compete Anna Kasparian in her ignorance about Syria and being uh, really not smart, then this uh, Francesca comes and she's uh, 
<laughs> presenting her view about Syria. So first, she says, of course, Assad got 95% of the votes because he killed, displaced, and I don't know, crushed his opposition. Uh, lady, can you please mention uh, any opposition, a name of an opposition group that Assad really crushed? I mean, I can I can say because you can't. One, ISIS. Two, Al Nusra Front. Three, uh, Jaysh al Islam, Ahbab al Sham, Jundul Aqsa. I mean, Turkestan Army, Osama bin Laden Brigade, the foreign Mujahideen. Yes, of course, he crushed them militarily because they were foreign terrorists. Or foreign backed terrorists regardless if they hold the Syrian nationality or not so saying that Assad killed his opponents for him to win a 95% is just saying that Assad crushed multinational jihadists and people who would take you if you're gonna if you you Francesca you want to live uh, if you go one day to Idlib they will uh, impose the harsh Sharia laws on you they will force you to wear a burqa or cover yourself or else you know what's your destiny lady you will be stoned to death but before they stone you to death they will rape you tens of mujahideen will rape you and then they will accuse you of adultery and the sharia court will come and say you deserve to be dead and they will stone you to death that's your destiny that's your democratic rebels who are now in Idlib, lady. That you are trying to give them legitimacy to your lefty bullshit. That you're trying to indoctrinate or manipulate and try to give political cover for the activities of these monstrous terrorists who won't hesitate to kill you and slaughter you and many other people like you who share um like human values in syria and they were subjected to this harsh terrorism by your pentagon and cia backed groups in syria the second thing is you say oh maybe assad himself uh, he has chosen the candidates that's a bs so there were like f over 40 50 candidates who uh, like declare their candidacy and they even received the 35 um, uh, uh, the approval from 35 MPs in the parliament so anyone who wants to participate in the elections you submit your candidacy but you need to have 35 the backing of 35 MPs of 250 MPs which is not difficult at all and then your candidacy goes to the Supreme Constitutional Court and the Supreme Constitutional Court filters the names and at the end of the day, there were three candidates. One of them was from the internal domestic opposition who has taken part in the Geneva talks, which is a, a, a platform for negotiations between the Syrian government and the opposition. And it is uh, sponsored by the UN. So he is like well-known opposition for the UN and he is also known for the Syrian people. So saying that Assad picked the candidates is really i really don't know what to call it anymore it's really scandalous in 2021 for people like in the young turks to repeat these old cliches about syria without taking into consideration uh, the 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 roots of the problem in syria which was a cia regime change war and then it developed into proxy war this was never about the democracy and human rights and all this stuff when you say it was a human rights and democracy issue then you are only and only giving um, further legitimacy to the C for the cia regime change wars in the region for them to install a puppet government that doesn't that follows the dictates of the american and the cia uh, government for instance the government claimed over 18 million eligible voters um, took part but because ballots were only offered in areas under government control only just over 10,000 were actually able to vote while according to the official results assad won over 13 million votes so there were 18 million eligible voters 
but there were ballots given to 13 million. Uh, and I'm sorry, to 10 million, and Assad is claiming that 13 million people voted for him. In essence, more people voted for him than individuals who are actually eligible to vote, given ballots to vote. Ah, uh, Nakasparian. <laughs> so you're quoting the uh, Washington Times. Uh, which wasn't in Syria during the elections. And you're saying that the government said there are 18 million eligible people and over 13 million voted for Assad, but the number of the um, uh, like ballot boxes or etc. were 10 million. How do you know that? What's your source? What's your source, lady? You have no source because the Washington Post was not in Syria and they had no excuse to not be in Syria. Because foreign journalists are granted visas to come to Syria and cover the elections. But they are very used now to come to Syria illegally and sneak into terrorist held areas without any, uh, let's say, government procedure or protection from the government or a visa. And you cruise with these terrorists for years now. So there is no excuse for you you were able to go and cover the elections and give us certain numbers for me let's count the numbers so they say only 10 million people were uh, able to vote in syria right false number one in aleppo there are around now 4 million people in damascus there are over 5 million people so these two together are around uh, 9 million right and you have the coastal side of Syria has around the Latakia, Tartus, uh, Jable, Banyas, around 4 million people. And also Homs and uh, Hama were also liberated. So overall, 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 there are around 15 million people in government held areas. We're now not counting the people who are still able to vote in the eastern shores of the Euphrates, which is controlled by the Syrian Democratic Forces, backed by the Pentagon. And what about the people abroad, Anna Kasparian? Are you going to mention that the refugees in uh, Europe or elsewhere were also able to go and vote? No. And do you also dare to mention that Turkey and Germany banned the Syrians from voting? And why they banned them from voting? Because they didn't want to show to their people that thousands and thousands of refugees whom they claimed in the past 10 years that they are running from Assad. Actually, there are a considerable number of them are going to vote for him because your entire regime change propaganda will break down when a cameraman or the journalists come and cover and see thousands of people are marching to the embassy to vote like it happened in Lebanon in 2014 and in 2020. Tens of thousands were walking on their feet to Baabda in uh, the Syrian embassy in Lebanon to cast their votes and this time they were attacked by the fascist right-wing people in in lebanon and they crashed their cars and they beaten them and even one syrian died while he was going to cast his vote do you also want to say that all these people were forced to go in, in lebanon or in other places like in france that happened the elections are you able to say that no you can't say that and you know well that these numbers are wrong but it's really it became a, like a People have become a pathological liars, seriously. And they have made a career out of our suffering. For them, it's just like a stupid video on YouTube and has over 40,000 views and they generate money. That's it. That's what they think of. They want to make a career and the money out of the suffering, from the suffering of people who lost their lives, who have been displaced, and they have become refugees due to a regime change war launched in the first place by the CIA who funded and supported and trained multinational jihadists who won't hesitate to behead you, Anna Kasparian, because you were just born as an Armenian Christian, etc., etc. It's a really shame. You should really feel ashamed because we, the Armenian community in uh, Syria, we have suffered a lot from these terrorists that you're trying to really um, 
give legitimacy to them by trying to say Assad ha doesn't have a legitimacy is a fucking brutal dictator that need to be sidelined and removed and so who is the alternative if you remove Assad who is the fighting who, who are these forces fighting Assad in Syria Al-Qaeda ISIS Nusra Islam's army Jund al-Aqsa Osama bin Laden brigade please name me one secular non genocidal uh, rebel group in Syria who could bring democracy and human rights. You can't. President Bashar al-Assad is running against two other men, Abdullah Salum Abdullah and Mahmoud Ahmad Mari, who stand very little chance of winning. They qualified for the vote after an extremely restrictive process in parliament. All candidates must have the support of 35 members of parliament, which is overwhelmingly dominated by Assad's Ba'athist party. Candidates must have lived in Syria continuously for 10 years, excluding anyone from the diaspora. And they must be married to a Syrian citizen. President Bashar al-Assad needs this election to legitimize his rule internally and externally because especially his very strong ally Russia is seeking the rehabilitation of the Assad regime internationally because Syria lies in ruins, it needs money for reconstruction. So what Vladimir Putin aims at is reconstruction being paid by the West, by the Europeans and the Americans. So they want to put some dynamic into this rehabilitation of the regime by claiming this election to be some kind of democratic, by putting two other candidates there, basically, which doesn't make it any more democratic than it used to be without candidates. I mean, look, um, you are um, quoting Deutsche Welle, which is also a German government-funded uh, TV channel, and you're just repeating what she said without even trying to double-check the information. First of all, any candidate can have 35 um, approval of 35 MPs because the Syrian parliament has 250 MPs, 63 of them are independent and 13 others are from uh, different political parties. Therefore, you have 76 MPs, so you need 35 uh, approval of 35 MPs of 76 out of 20 uh, 50 MPs so it's really not that difficult to get the approval and first of all like these MPs that you say dominated by the Assad government it's the Ba'ath party that rules uh, Syria because they have the biggest uh, MPs that's democracy right if you if you have the biggest and strongest party and you have the biggest vo uh, number of votes then of course you are uh, you will dominate the uh, the parliament just like the CDU dominates the uh, parliament with the collaboration with the SPD in Germany I, I don't understand how these people can make such claims and then yes he has to live abroad for 10 uh, he shouldn't live abroad in uh, for 10 like uh, he should live in syria in the past 10 years of course how do you want to trust a candidate that was living abroad in let's say in the uk or france or germany or in the united states and he was breeded by the intelligence apparatuses of these countries when you have a fucking war in syria that is launched by these governments i mean we are in an exceptional situation of course he has to live in Syria in the past 10 years. Do you think it would it is okay to accept the candidacy of someone living in Washington DC and he's been networking in the past 10 years with APAC and other uh, uh, Zionist lobbies in the in the United States and calling for foreign intervention in uh, in his own country? I don't know how these people think really. And um and they're trying to say yes, so Russia is trying to bring legitimacy to Syria, uh, to Bashar al-Assad, because Assad needs uh, the foreign money of the West. Look, Assad repeated this many times and he said, we're not going to take a penny from Western governments and we're not going to give them the opportunity to invest in Syria. And those who have will give them the right to invest in Syria are the ones who help Syria and not the ones who help destroy Syria. So. Your claims are unfounded. Well, one of the most, um, I think, cruel parts of this election is that you saw Bashar al-Assad voting in Duma, 
which is a suburb of Damascus, which was the site of a chemical attack that has been contested by himself, by a lot of state actors and proxies, including Russia, saying, no, 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 a hundred and over a hundred civilians did not die in that attack. They staged the attack on themselves. So just imagine having suffered a chemical attack, losing relatives, and then having the autocrat vote in a so called pretend democratic election in the very town that your relatives or you died in. I mean, I don't know how more on the nose you can get when it comes to just speaking to how cruel this administration, this regime is. As we look towards reconstruction, you're like, Man, is there what is the role of internationalism right now? What is the role mm-hmm. we want the United States to play? For sure, we are against intervention. We're against imperialism. But what is the role? How can we, you know, strengthen the international community so that you know we can actually, you know, sideline dictators and promote people who would who agree with democracy, right? But in a again in a diplomatic way, not in an arming rebels kind of way. Francesca, Francesca, first of all, the Duma chemical attack has never taken place. It never happened. You are repeating the CIA talking points by saying the Duma chemical attack happened. In, and in the aftermath of this alleged chemical attack, the United States, France and UK bombed Syria based on false allegations. The OPCW sent investigators and researchers to Duma and they didn't find a shred of evidence that there was a sarin gas or chlorine gas used. In the contrary, they concluded that the, 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 the alleged scene was staged by the White Helmets and Jaysh al-Islam. And the people who died there, we don't know how they died. Maybe they were killed by these terrorists who accused the Syrian government that uh, used chemical weapons. And even the cylinder that was supposed to fall from a Syrian helicopter and lay down peacefully on, on, on a bed without destroying it, the OPCW investigators, they said this scene was staged and the cylinder was put there manually. But what happened after this investigation? The United States lobbied on the administration of the OPCW and threatened it to cut the funding of the OPCW if they published this investigation. Therefore, the administration of the OPCW changed and distorted the uh, the the final report and they published a schooled report distorted report to accuse the syrian government of using a chemical weapon there which led later to um that the opcw's reputation was the, the last damaged because the investigators or the researchers themselves went against their uh, organization and said hey guys we are now leaking you the, the, real, the real report that our administration doesn't want you to see. And they suppressed it for, for the public not to know what happened in Duma. And we know now for sure that these investigators are trying now to contact their administration. And their administration is refusing to talk to them because they will be embarrassed in front of the entire world that an organization like the OPCW that's supposed to be neutral and objective, its administration has bowled in front of the United States and changed the investigation uh, outcome. This was number one. So the, the message that Assad sent wasn't against this chemical attack, uh, stage chemical attack, no. It was against this so-called international community, which consists of the US, France, and UK, who bombed Syria because of an incident happened there. And he said, your regime change war has failed and I won. This was the message. It wasn't about the chemical weapon or mocking the uh, victims of uh, the stage attack, which was killed by US-backed terrorists, most supposedly. Who killed them? They were in control of uh, that uh, geography when the alleged or the stage attack happened. And then this Francesca, she's like, oh, look, we are against imperialism, Habibi. We don't like intervention. We don't like to overthrow governments through military force. We don't like to arm rebels to overthrow dictatorship. But look, let's do it in a diplomatic way. Let's not like, let's do it tacitly. Let's not show the world that we are a fucking imperialist. We are hiding under a lefty umbrella and we are just telling the people, look, we like democracy and we're just spreading it in a diplomatic way. Where the fact is, 
she's saying let's spread our democracy through these NGOs and create color revolutions without sending uh, weapons and arming rebels. I mean, come on, it's 2021. That's a very old uh, fashioned way of overthrowing legitimate governments. Let's do it in a more modern way, in a more let's use soft power instead of hard power. I mean, if you look at yourself, Francesca, in the mirror, don't you see yourself as a clown? You're just promoting for sidelining foreign leaders through diplomacy instead of foreign force. You're a fucking imperialist. You're also diseased and infected with intellectual imperialism like Anna Kasparian. And you both ladies think that you have the moral superiority to overthrow other governments and tell us how we should govern ourselves. You're a fucking imperialist. If nobody told you this before, I'm telling you now. Shame on you. Both of you are fucking imperialists. It is very important to understand that this election is an opportunity for Syrians to prove their loyalty to the regime. And this is important in a dictatorship and in a police state because it gives you security. It could save your life. It could save you from detention. It could bring you some more humanitarian aid. It could bring you a permission by the Secret Service that you need to maybe get back to your own house. So many Syrians use this actually to say that they are you know, uh, on the side of the president, obviously, because they are afraid of being detained or uh, being persecuted. I mean, this point, man, is really crazy. So if you want to go and vote, you write your name outside, uh, you register your name outside the polling center and you come in, they give you a paper. There are three pictures with the names of the candidates and you just put X or whatever on the name that you like to vote or elect. And you do it behind curtains. Nobody see who are you electing. And you just put then the letter inside the box. And if you didn't vote, nothing will happen to you. There are many people who didn't vote. Please show me one single example of a person who didn't vote. And anything uh, happened to him. Or he was harmed. Or he was imprisoned. Or show me one fucking example of a person who voted and he got privilege from the government. This is a pure lie. You're just like, this is a fucking Nazi strategy of repeating the lie until you believe it. It's unbelievable how much in 2021 we were still, these people can still lie with a straight face and they present themselves as experts on Syria. You couldn't even map Syria before 2021 and now you're a fucking expert you know nothing you know shit about Syria man I'm sorry I'm really angry and mad because a channel like this the young Turks that they claim to be left-wing they should be anti-imperialist they are giving they're poisoning the brains of the Americans they're poisoning the brains of the left-wing people they are making them imperialists they are indoctrinating indoctrinating them to become imperialists under the umbrella of the left wing and therefore i am making this video to address this issue and talk to americans since the americans are the the percentage of the americans are the highest on my channel and i want to tell them these guys are not your friends in the young turks and i don't know why people follow these uh, youtube channels and we all know that recently they received 20 million from Clinton donors. So they changed their uh, path and the way they used to report. I would rather watch um, the Jimmy Dore with all his funny uh, commentaries than these clowns who really, I'm sorry, I'm really angry about this, but please share this video as much as you can um this time i'm not telling you if you like it please share it i'm really asking you to share it with your friends and on your social media accounts and increase the number of my subscribers let's have a bigger audience let's replace these clowns who know nothing about the middle east and in other regions like they can't see like beyond their noses and they just come 
in front of a TV and they make a fool of themselves. But unfortunately, they are influential and they have tens of thousands of followers. And the thing is, for them, this is just the issue of a career. They're just making a career out of the suffering of other people and their lives and their fortunes and everything. Like this video of them is being watched now by 40,000 people. And for them, it's just for about money. And for me, it's about my country and about the well-being and the security, peace and stability of the people, not only in the region, but abroad. And because of these interventions, also the security of American forces is being put under danger. So we don't want anyone to be harmed. Just fuck off, man. Like, take your forces and go away from, from Syria. Nobody wants you in Syria. You're not invited. You're not welcomed. But these guys in the Young Turks, they are giving a political cover not only to the American occupation forces in Syria under the false pretext of fighting terrorism, but also giving a political cover to the radical terrorists in Syria by trying to delegitimize the Syrian government or the leader or the elections, etc. etc. It's a really shame. They should be ashamed themselves. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like to support my channel also financially, please become my patron. It really helps me. I'm paying for my equipment and for the subscriptions that I have. And it uh, helps me continue and post and uh, better videos for you in the future. See you next time.